Pathfinder operations have always been an extremely useful tool in Adobe Illustrator, and they continue as such in Adobe Illustrator CS4. The only thing that has changed, really, is the default behavior of the Pathfinder operations. And to demonstrate that, I've got Adobe Illustrator CS3 opened on screen. Let me grab the rectangle tool and draw two rectangles, one overlapping the other one. Now let's say I wanted to combine this into a single path. Well, to do that, we'd always go to the Pathfinder palette and click on this Add to Shape button. But before we'd click on it in the past, we would hold down the Alt key if we wanted to make this into one continuous path. If you just clicked on the Add to Shape button, like I just did, what you're doing is turning this into a compound shape, which you can see right here in the Layers palette. What I've done is apparently nothing. Uh, it looks like I've done nothing. Hmm, let's try that again. Kaboom. Now we got a compound shape. Okay, so what is a compound shape? Well, look here. It's two paths that interact with each other. All right, let me get the direct selection tool here. And you can see, let me hide the selection outline. You can see that um, it's kind of like a live effect. These two paths continually interact with each other. Even if I move it outside of the um, bottom path, you can see it remains a compound path and it'll continue to interact with it. Okay. Now, contrast that with the new behavior in Adobe Illustrator CS4. And here's Adobe Illustrator CS4. Four, four. Let me select both of these and now go to the Pathfinder palette. Now if I click on Add to Shape, I automatically get one single path instead of that compound shape. The behaviors are reversed. Let me back up. Let me hit Control Z. Now I have to hit hold the Alt key and hit here to create that compound shape. All right. So they've just reversed the default behavior in Adobe Illustrator CS4. Now, I'd like to continue the discussion and just talk about Pathfinder operations in general and just point out how useful they really are. Those of you who saw my lesson on gradients remember this, and you also remember how this peacock's tail extended out well beyond the artboard. Sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want it, all your artwork to just end at the edge of the artboard, and to do that, you can use a Pathfinder operation quite easily. Let me show you. Let me get the rectangle tool. Let me draw a rectangle from corner to corner. Now let me go to the Layers palette. And that path that I just drew, you can see it right here. It's selected. Let me move that layer right above the layer that we want to crop out. And then select that layer as well by holding down the Shift key on your keyboard and clicking. Now they're both selected. The layer that I want to use, the rectangle that I want to use to crop out this layer is one layer above. Then all I have to do is go to the Pathfinder palette and click on this little crop icon right here. And there you have it. We no longer need that clipping mask to clip out that peacock's tail. Let me show you. I just turned the clipping mask off. And there's no change to the document at all. It's now all, all artwork is now contained inside of the artboard. It's pretty handy. Now, let me bring this fire extinguisher onto screen here. Let me talk about the Add to Shape Pathfinder operation. This is very useful in the sign business when you want to create one continuous path okay, on the outside of this object. And why would you want to do that? Well, in the sign business, we cut out a lot of graphics. And let's say we wanted to print this okay, and then create a die cut here. What we need to do is create a separate path for that die cut. Okay? To do that, let me move this over just a little bit. Okay. To do that, it's very simple. Let me show you. Let me select that. Go to the Layers palette. Let me collapse this layer here. Let me move that fire extinguisher down here to its own layer to make it easy to work on. Now what I want to do is duplicate it. Because I don't want to change this fire extinguisher at all, I just want to use it to make a cut path. 
To duplicate it, click, hold down the Alt key, move it up to a new layer. Now we've got the same fire extinguisher on another layer. Turn off the bottom layer. All right. Now with this entire top layer selected, go to the Pathfinder palette, and with the new behavior, or the new default function of the Add to Shape, all you got to do is click, and you've just created one continuous shape. And now you can stroke this path with something called Cut Contour. That's, that's what the Roland printer looks for, is a spot color called Cut Contour. And so that's what we have here. Now let me turn on the bottom layer. Let me zoom in. And you'll see that that continuous Cut Contour outlines the graphic. So my digital printer will print that, go back and cut out along that cut contour, and I'll have a die cut graphic that I can put on a vehicle, a window, whatever. One other piece of advice for those of you that are in the sign business and want to use this technique. After you've applied this, what you'll want to do is apply an effect. And if you saw my lesson um, in another series, what you want to do is apply the offset path to this and apply a negative offset so you'll end up with this cut contour just inside of your graphic. That'll give you just a little bit of bleed so you don't have any white background showing.